Well, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us virtually at our virtual Bible study on Wednesday night. I know that some of you are finishing up the semester and, and you're still uh, taking classes online and that you have some finals and some tests that you still have to take. And some of you have already completed those, especially you seniors probably are done for your semester. I, uh, as you know, many of you know that I'm currently going to school and, and get my master's in theology and, and I just finished up my last test. And so I was uh, super excited about that. I just finished it up maybe a few minutes ago. And um, so I was really excited that my semester has ended and uh, looking forward to the summer. So I know that uh, many of you are still in school, but it should be over pretty quickly. So uh, another thing, announcement for the summer, is that I know that some of you had signed up for Super Summer. Super Summer, you probably already know, has been canceled. And we are meeting to review camp to see whether or not we could still go to camp or not. If we're not going to camp, though, I promise you we're going to plan, plan a lot of fun things this summer. And we're still going to have Bible study and we're going to have like a local camp. But if we can't go to camp, that's what we'll do. And it'll be a lot of fun. Trust me. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to dive into God's Word and have a great time of fellowship. But um, we'll be making that announcement soon. So hang in there for that. So we're going to tonight. We're going to uh, follow back up in First Peter, and we're in chapter four tonight. Our study of First Peter. We've been going on Wednesday nights through the Epistle of First Peter. So if you have your Bibles, get them out and turn with me to First Peter, chapter four, and we're going to be covering verses one through eleven tonight. One through eleven. We're making, taking a little bit bigger chunk tonight than we have been. So. The, uh, the letter to 1 Peter, uh, the letter of 1 Peter, is a letter to the early church. And we uh, talked about this a long, long time ago when we first started the uh, study in 1 Peter. And so the church was experience, experiencing extreme persecution. And so they had separated, they dispersed all across, all across the Roman Empire to the very outskirts of the Roman Empire. And so Peter is writing a letter to them, a letter of encouragement. And so we saw in the previous weeks about Christ's suffering. So we pick up after Peter talks about uh, in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. And so it kind of picks up from that point of view. And we see that how Christ suffered once for us to bring us closer to God. And you'll see in, in chapter 4 how that, um, and how that our suffering kind of parallels Christ's suffering. And that our suffering also brings us closer to God. So we'll see that in chapter 4. So join with me and uh, take your Bibles out. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1. It says, therefore, meaning in light of, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. It's basically, this is a call of arms. A call to arms basically means that we are to prepare for battle. That's what the military calls it, to prepare for battle, to get ready for engagement. So, Peter's saying, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mindset, the same mindset of Christ. And some of you may ask, what is that mindset we're supposed to arm ourselves with? We're going to see that. Peter's going to explain it to us. Keep reading in verse 1. It says, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Meaning that if we suffer like Christ, we have the same mindset as Christ which is not sinning, ceasing from sin. So the mindset of Christ is to be sinless. So we should have that same mindset. We should focus on being sinless. Verse 2, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. So the things that we once used to do, we shouldn't focus on anymore because we have the mindset of Christ. And the mindset of Christ is to be sinless and to to focus on the will of God, to fulfilling the will of God. Look at verse 3. For we have spent enough of our past time in doing the will of the Gentiles. The Gentiles is an example of people who are uh, sinful, who do not know Jesus, who do not know God. So it says, 
For we have spent enough of our past time in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, rivalries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. What Peter's saying is that the ungodly focus on these things. They focus on lewdness. Well, lewdness means sensuality. It means to be sexual or sexuality. Um, I know that we are bombarded with sex on TV, on movies, on the radio. Every song pretty much has to do with, with these things that's on the radio, secular songs that's on the radio. Um, they have to do with sex. They have to do with partying. They have to do with drinking. I mean, all songs pretty much have to do with these things. And so um, I know girls, you are, um, you are, are pressured to be, uh, to be sexual, to look sexy, and, and that's not of God. So it says, we once walked in lewdness, in sexuality. We walked being sexy, in lust, in drunkenness rivalries guys getting into fights girls getting into fights that's of the ungodly drinking parties and abominable idolatries abominable idolatries one of the most uh, that i see that's prevalent in our society is is the uh, worship or the idolization of ourselves i mean you see it on tiktok you see it on on uh, facebook on on twitter it's all about us 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 and making us famous and showing everybody what we can do and what we've done and the Bible tells us that that's ungodly I mean this this description basically kind of describes a lot of high school parties doesn't it I mean I was in high school once I remember after football or after basketball games or um, uh, whatever sporting events that we'd have after prom also they would be house parties or after parties and it's a lot of times parents are at home or sometimes parents would even worse they would allow their kids to have parties at their house and they would be drinking parties and they would be dancing at these parties and this dancing at the parties are very sexual in nature there were, unfortunately is drunkenness at the parties and guys and girls trying to hook up and, and, and abominable idolatries at these parties. What the Bible says is that we as Christians, we have the mindset of Christ. We are to stay away from these things. So verse 4 tells what the response of the world would be to us. Look at verse 4. It says, in regard to these, thi these things, they, meaning someone that is not of Christ, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, speaking evil of you. So the world thinks it's strange that we don't participate in these type of things. They, they think it's strange that we, don't, um, that we don't do these things, and they don't even just go as far as thinking it's strange. They speak evil of us. They talk bad about us. They gossip about us. They probably say, and I know I've heard this before, is that they think you're holier than thou. They think you take, um, uh, that you think you're better than them. Where in reality, we should have the mindset of Christ. That we don't do these things because Christ wouldn't want us to do these things. You know, sometimes the things mentioned in verse 3 uh, seem fun. And may have an appearance of being fun. But they all lead to destruction. In the end, it's bad. And look at verse 5. It says, for this reason. I'm sorry. Verse 5 says, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So Peter says that we all are going to be judged. Peter says that we're going to give an account who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Basically what that means is, is that Christ will judge us. Whether we're alive or whether we're dead at his return. See, the early church expected or anticipated Christ to come back at any moment. And they were concerned about their loved ones who were in Christ who had passed away. They thought maybe they missed out on heaven. Maybe they missed out on Jesus' return. But, but Peter tells us, and the Bible is clear, that, that those who have died in Christ 
haven't missed out on anything, for they will be raised up first. In the twinkling of an eye, they will be raised up along with those of us who are still remaining. And so Peter is saying that regardless if we die or regardless if we're alive at Christ's return, we will be judged. Look at verse 6. It says, For this reason the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. So the gospel was preached not to dead people. That's not what Peter's saying. The gospel was preached to all people, even those who have died. And whether they've died in, the, died in Christ or they died apart from Christ, the gospel is still preached. And this, again, is a comfort to the early church for those who have died in the flesh. See, these, these people, these members of the early church, they were persecuted. They were, they were martyred. They were killed for their faith. And so they were judged negatively by men in the flesh. But then they were also be judged by God in the Spirit after this life. So that's what Peter's talking about in verse 6. Now, here's verse 7, and verse 7 through 11 actually tells us what we should do. He, these are our, our, our orders for this battle of the flesh. These are our orders. These are the description, our instructions of how we should have the mindset of Christ. So look at verse uh, 7. It says, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. That word watchful also means to be alert, to be vigilant. So the number one thing that we should do to have a mindset of Christ is to pray, to be vigilant in our prayer. Number one is to pray. That's our instruction from Peter. Verse 8, it says, And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. So number two is to love each other fervently, to love the body of Christ fervently. Verse 9, it says, Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. The word hospitable means to be kind. So we should be kind to one another we shouldn't backbite. We shouldn't be going behind some other people's, people's back and, and stabbing them in the back with words. But we should be lifting them up. Look at verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. So that word minister means to serve. So number four is to serve. So we are to pray. We are to love the body of Christ. We are to be kind and not backbiting. And we are to serve or minister to one another, minister to the body of Christ as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. How many people have ever worked on a car? Some of you guys may raise your hand. Some girls may raise your hand. Um, but do you know what a manifold is? So a manifold, if you, those of us or those of you who don't know what a manifold is, it's kind of like my fingers, right? Um, and, and you have uh, four intake on one side of the engine and four outtake on the other. So the manifold brings air into the engine so the engine can combust and, and have an explosion inside the engine and move the, the cylinder up and down or move the, uh, uh, the piston up and down on the cylinder to run the engine and then there's an exhaust manifold and so that's where all the air gets shot out. So you have these, these pipes coming in. Manifold means uh, a lot of um, varying uh, intakes and varying outtakes. And, and the idea here is that um, Peter says that as good stewards of the manifold grace of God, that, that God bestows His grace on each of us. And it varies how much grace He bestows upon us, how much grace that we actually need. I know me, myself, I need a lot of grace. I need a lot of grace in my life because of all the times I've messed up, all the times I've, I've uh, sinned against God, God has bestowed grace upon grace upon grace and upon grace upon me. Whereas a lot of you students uh, are, don't, don't need near as much grace as I needed. And that's kind of the picture that, that, that Peter's painting in verse 10. Moving on to verse 11, it says, If anyone speaks 
let him speak as the oracles of God. That word oracles means um, as utterances of God, as remarks of God, as God's word. So to have a mindset of Christ and in our instructions, number five is to speak the word of God. So we have number one, to pray vigilantly. Number two, to love fervently the body of Christ. Number three, to be kind, hospitable to one another, not backbiting, but lifting each other up. Number four, to serve, to minister to one another in the body of Christ. And number five is to speak the word of God. And Peter goes on in verse 11, it says, If anyone ministers or if anyone serves, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. And I think that's important to note. And the reason why, let me give you an example of that, is that I may want to serve or minister to someone in song, but God has not given me that ability. Um, he has not given me the ability to sing or to play instruments very well. I've tried, man, I tried when I was in college to learn how to play the guitar, and what I've managed to do is, is to strum a couple of chords and kind of piece them together. But in no means am I gifted musically. And I've come to realize that. I mean, I can sing, but it sounds horrible. And it wouldn't be, a, it wouldn't be um, a blessing to anyone to hear me sing as compared to some of you. Some of you can sing like an angel. And, and you can minister through song. And what Peter's saying is, is that let him, let him who ministers, let him do it with the ability in which God supplies. God has given us gifts and our gifts should be used to serve Him, to serve the body of Christ. And here's the reason why. Verse 11, it says, That in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So our purpose here on earth, our purpose of having the mindset of Christ, and not... And not walking the way we once walked, dying to self, and living as Christ. Our purpose is to glorify God. And we do that in our heart. We do that in our mind. We do that by word, but we also do that by deed. And that's what Peter is encouraging us to do. To get ready. To get ready with the mindset of Christ. To pray. To love. To be kind to serve, and to speak His Word boldly to a lost world. I, uh, I pray that you do that. I pray that you're encouraged by this message, and I pray that you, you take up arms and have the mindset of Christ this week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the students that tuned in. Lord, just, um, just, just bless them. Help them to, uh, to change their mindset if they don't have your mindset. Help us to do our best to cease from sin. Help us to pick up your word daily, to read it, to apply it to our life, and to follow it. Help us to serve you just not in, in word, not just in mind, but also in deed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this Wednesday night. I know it's short, but I will see you this coming Sunday virtually for Sunday school. Thanks so much. God bless.